Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use and then how to build this four port telephone trunk line breakout box. So what this is, is this is a breakout box I'm, I've been developing that has two trunk line ports that are standard RJ45 out to four RJ11 telephone ports. Um, I am building this because as an amateur radio operator, I tend to help support a lot of special events where we have to temporarily deploy communication systems. And as part of that, we need telephone communications. Normally what we, in a typical setup, what we'll have is this is your punch down block that you would be getting the building's telephone service from someone like AT&T. And the hosts of the event would come in and say, all right, these are the specific telephone lines you guys can use. You can, we then need to tap into those phone lines and run them out to wherever we need them. Typically how we do this is we just take a couple really long phone lines, tap them into the punch down block, string them out across the room and plug them into the telephones. But we, I wanted to kind of come up with a cleaner way to do it since I do, do tend to do this so often. Um, the, my thought on how to do it cleaner is that since these, these events, we are doing mostly computer ethernet cables, a lot of RF coax cables, and this is the only thing that we have telephone lines for. And so I thought that it would be really nice to be able to get rid of all of my long telephone cords by converting them onto standard ethernet cables, and then using that as my long trunk lines between the punch down block and our actual dispatch consoles, right? So let's first talk about your standard ethernet cable, right? Is This is your standard ethernet cable. This is a straight through, so you've got um, white, orange, orange. Yeah, white, orange, orange. White, green, blue. White, blue, green. Uh, white, brown, and then brown, right? So what you have is you have one pair, a second pair, a third pair and a fourth pair, or really it's the first pair is in the middle, second pair is on the left, third pair straddles the first pair, and the fourth pair is on the right. Ethernet, fast Ethernet, uses the second and third pair. Tell, it, the original conception was that you could, on one RJ45 jack, either wire it up so that you could plug in Ethernet into it, or you could also plug in, just this is a standard RJ11, telephone jack, which taps into the center center pair. What I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the fact that CAT5 cable happens to have four twisted pairs in it, which gives us four telephone lines. All right, so what I have is this sacrificial cable, which has a flo free-floating female RJ45 on one side, and then just loose wires for the first, second, third, and fourth pairs. Um, if you don't know already, this is actually the first four pairs in a 25-pair sequence. Um, the first five pairs all have white in them and, and sequentially go through blue, orange, green, brown, and then slate, which you only ever see the first four in this 25 sequence, right? And then the white goes to yellow, and you go yellow-blue, uh, yellow-orange, yellow-green, yellow-brown, yellow-slate, and that's your second five, but we're only dealing with the first four here, right? So we've got white, blue, blue, white, orange, orange, white, green, green, white, brown, brown, right? And so off of your punch down block, you know, I'm going to pick the four telephone lines that we need, come in and tap into them, right? So we would just come in like this. Tap onto those lines come in with a 66 punch down tool and there's our first of our four lines tapped in right so I would I would do that with the other other three as well right so then on this RJ45 female connector I then have the first pair in the center the second pair on the side the third pair straddling the first pair and the fourth pair on the other side Right? This is compatible with every standard Ethernet cable, which at these events, I'm bringing Ethernet cables everywhere from 6 inches up to 200 feet long. And so I've got a standard arsenal of those. Right, So then, from that punch down block, I plug in this, and it comes over to this one of my breakout boxes, 
and the two top ports are our two trunk lines that are completely identical. So I can take this, plug it into one of them, and then whatever telephone we happen to need at that console, we can take it and say, if we need line number two, I just plug into the one, two second port. And I now have telephone service here on what was the white, orange, orange pair on this ethernet cable that runs back to this block, right? Then to run off to the next console, I can daisy chain these. So plug this into the second trunk line port and this would then run over to my next breakout box where I would then be able to plug in any arbitrary set of these four telephone lines there as well. Um, the, one, of the, one of the major events I do this for um, is the Wildflower Triathlon where we have a dispatch emergency medical line, a dispatch non-emergency line, and then um, on the other two ports, we're playing with a internal telephone exchange within the network. Um, so we might end up using all four, but I just built it out to support all four, even though you won't all ne always necessarily need to have all of them. All right, so the usage here, once it's all sealed like this, is pretty simple. Let's look at the inside of it. So what we have is this is a standard faceplate that is a six position keystone faceplate. And behind it, I've got two RJ45 keystones and four RJ11 keystones. Um, I take four twisted pair, punch them down in one keystone, and then I punch them down in the second keystone without cutting them off, right? So every single twisted pair starts over here goes through this keystone and comes out the side. It then runs down and is punched down onto each port. So number one is blue, number two is orange, number three is green, number four is brown. Right, and then this just gets screwed into an unmodified 12 cubic inch gang box and it's a free floating module. All right, so let me get set up and I'll show you exactly how to build this. All right, so the components you're gonna need for every trunk line breakout box is going to be a six-way keystone faceplate, right? So this has six cutout squares with a frame around it so that you can then click into them these punch down keystones. You're going to need two keystones for RJ45, which is an eight position, and then you need four keystones for RJ11, which is a two, which is a six position two conductor. Uh, these happen to be RJ14 punch downs in that they have six position four conductor, but since we're only using the center two, you know, the center two conductors, it doesn't matter if you have RJ11, RJ14, or RJ25 keystones, they're all the same connector, it just depends on how many pins are populated, right? Uh, this is a 12 cubic inch junction box, right? So this is your standard gang box, 85 cents at Home Depot, and then about eight inches of just scrap solid core ethernet cable, right? So this is cat five cable that came off of, I think the end of some jumper cable I was cutting. Um, I just keep a few scraps of that around for these little projects. Tool wise, we're gonna need, um, I, I'm gonna use a cat five stripper, a pair of lineman scissors, and a punch down tool with a cutting and non-cutting 110 blade. Right, so if you look at this, there's one side of the 110 blade has a cutting blade on it. The other side does not have a blade on it, which means that we can then, on the second port, on the second trunk line port, the, it won't cut off the cables, and so they will come out the sides, which we can then chain down onto each of these ports. All right. So first, we want to take one of our RJ45s, and we're going to punch down all four of them following the 568B color code. So that it's on on the jack. It'll have an A color code and a B color code. We're following the B one just because that way it matches all of my Ethernet cables because. You know, any any normal person's Ethernet cables all only follow the B standard, anyways. 
And so we're going to punch this one down with the cutting blade so that all the pairs are going to come out of it and then chain that through the second one. Given our ethernet cable, we're going to strip off just kind of enough to work with here at the beginning. And then we're going to need about that much. So taking the lineman scissors, cut it off to a reasonable length like that. And then we can just pull out the zip cord because we're not going to be needing that because we're just going to slide off the rest of this insulation once we get it started. All right. Given the punch down tool, we're going to select the cutting blade. Um, these blades are all real standard and you can get them for either 110 or 66, which I used earlier. The 110 goes in the tool and twists to lock. And then we're going to just start unwrapping pairs and punching them down. All right, so first pair on pins two and one are orange. So what you do is you kind of line it up, pull them down a little bit just so they kind of sit there, and then you come in with your punch down tool with the blade facing towards the sacrificial side. One, two, and it's now punched down, right? There's little blades inside the keystones here. Let's see if I can, come on, focus. Um, there's little blades in there which uh, cleave through the insulation of this, so you don't need to strip these wires, which is why punch downs are so really, really nice. Right? Second pair, which is six and three, we need green. Punch it down. Third pair, pins five and four, is blue. And I'm I'm just I'm saying third pair here in that the sequence that I'm building them. Uh, blue is really the first pair, um, which is why it's on the center pins. So don't don't let that confuse you. Um, On a lot of just RJ11 cables, they won't use this 25 this 25 pair color code. They'll instead use the old um, Bell color code, where it was solid red and solid green for the first pair. Um, which you you still see that quite a bit on like the RJ. There we go. You know, on the RJ11, you know, silver satin cables that you see, right, so I mean, I think this one, yeah, you can see that this one's got red on the left and green on the right, um, so you'll still see that color code, but, you know, anything I build is with new Category 5 riser cable, um, so I don't know the AT&T color spec off the top of my head, right, so we've got, now that we've got this secured, we can take off the rest of this insulation and it won't all flop around, right? So I, I left, I deliberately left that on up until now, just so that we wouldn't have four loose twisted pairs rolling around on the bench, right? So this is, we finished the first one, take the dust cover and snap it on, which is a little silly since this is gonna be inside a, you know, gang box, but you know, fine. And then this is gonna get snapped in eventually um, on this top left port of the keystone. Right. At this point, we then want to form the cable around so that it can punch down on the second trunk line port and then get chained into each of one of the local breakout ports. Right. So we're going to form the cable around like that, find our second RJ45 port. And then this is going to sit like this, and now we're going to reverse our punch down tool from cutting to non-cutting, so that now when we punch them down, all of this extra length, right, so given 
our first trunk line port and our second trunk line port. We're going to punch all of these down here, but we want all of this extra to be hanging off the sides because that's what you know goes down to our extra ports. And so again, we are following the B pattern again because we really want all this to be inconsistent because it would get pretty confusing if at one station it's port, you know, it's port two, and at the second port it's port three, right? So you really want to make sure that you get your colors correct. And how we're going to punch this down here is you just get a little bit of the twist straightened out locally inside the cable. All right, so I just, I'm separating the pair like that just enough so I can get it inside the punch down. Now when I come in with the non-cutting side of my punch down tool, it engages with the blade inside of this keystone, but doesn't cut it off. All right, so now we've got all this length for the actual local access port. right about there. Blue. Blue is always the trickiest one to get in because it's the tightest wound um, because if you look at these twisted pairs, um, they each one of them has a different twist rate to them, which is part of why twisted pair gives you such good isolation between these unshielded sets of wires, since they twist at different rates. Right, and so blue is always the tightest one in category 5E and category 6 cable, um, which always makes it the most difficult to work with. And finally, brown. Um, personally, I really, I really, um, you can, once you've worked with cable long enough, you can tell the difference between Cat 5 and Cat 6. Um, just because Cat 6 is so much harder to work with, because it's so much more rigid and more, so more tightly wound, um, which is an advantage not needed um, in home networking since um, in home networking you're only using gigabit which runs perfectly fine over cat 5e all right second one's done put the dust cover on it at this point i like to actually put these into the keystone plate all right so on your keystone plate there is a um stamped usually in it somewhere that says up so there's a little arrow right there that says up and then how we install these keystones is there's on the bottom of the keystone there's just this hook and on the top there's a spring-loaded tab so what you want to do is we want to hook the bottom tab on the frame and then leverage the spring-loaded top into it right so we've got the hook on the bottom and then the top snaps in and there's our first jack second one same deal and now we've got our trunk line completed, right? So here's here's our two trunk lines with uh, this little jumper between them, and then these twisted pairs are going to run down into our four RJ11s, which are going to get terminated in somewhat the same fashion, except we're going back to cutting now because this is going to be the end of each one of these. Um, these are a little bit un the ones I got here are a little bit unfortunate because they're not color coded. Um, but that's just the cost of getting these things on eBay. Um, so we're going to switch to the cutting blade. And I want to make sure that I get this polarity right. So when you're looking at the front of it, you want the right one to be... So there's four, you know, so there's six positions in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only pins in two, three, four, and five. The pair we're using is three and four. Four is the tip which is going to be your striped pair and so looking at the back of it 
um, the stripes, the white brown, you know, for example, is going to be in the uh, left position here, right? And so, uh, since number one is blue, we're going to bring this over here, mock it up that it's going to go like that, and then we want it to sit right about there, all right? And so we can. untwist this pair <laughs> play it down in the pins three and four position Um, and since we're doing, you know, analog telephone here, um, the, keeping the twists in it isn't really anywhere near as important as it is when you're doing category, you know, actual, you know, Ethernet data punch down. Um, I'm just keeping them nice out of habit, right? And so there's our first keystone. We've punched it down with the white one on the left and the blue, solid blue on the right. And then we can just snap it in and stick the dust cover on it. Um, and again, these are cheap ones, so the dust covers don't really tend to click in that nicely, which would be an endorsement for why you should get nice ones, but, you know, I'm cheap and poor as a unemployed college graduate, so that we're going to live with the uh, cheap ones from China. All right, second pair, orange going to sit here, so we want about that much cable. Punch down tool. Click. Click. Port number two done. Snap it into place. Yeah, and that, and that one ended up a little bit long, but that's okay. We can just kind of shove it in there. Dust cover. Uh, pair number three, green. Don't want about that much. cover and then lever it into place. Oh, I made this one a little short. There we go. There's our third. All right, so we're moving along. Last one. It's going to sit like that. We're going to need about that much cable. Dust 
press cover. Oh, ho, ho, that one's really short. Pushing my luck here. Wow, I'm not going to be able to get that one in. Ooh. Hopefully if I pop out this top one, that will give me enough slack to lever it down into place, which will then give me enough room to get that one. Okay, yeah, so don't, don't go on them quite that short. That's kind of pushing my luck there. Um, that cable is a little bit tight, so I'll probably come back in and redo that, um, but it might be okay. All right, so, so there's our four ports, right, so you're two trunk lines up here are completely mirrored and then one two three four are breaking out the center pair the left pair the straddled pair and the right pair and then I just took um, a real generic you know the the plainest 12 cubic inch gang box I could find and this just fits in there and then the face plates gonna come with a pair of screws which are going to screw in on the top and the bottom here. And we've got a finished breakout box, right? So at that point, we can then chain as many of these as we, w we like um, for breaking out the four telephone pairs at each dispatch desk or you know group or table. Um, so real simple, real low cost. This is about $10 worth of components all in all. Uh, Hopefully, if, if you have a need for this sort of kind of temporary multi-telephone line running, uh, you found this of use. And if any questions, uh, go ahead and toss them in the comments. Thanks for watching.